Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Chapter 5, which is all about cell division. So this starts on page 79, and it is not the longest chapter. It only goes to page 98, so just about 20 pages, okay? And so we're going to talk about um, two forms of cell division that our body goes through. One, division of our regular body cells, which is called somatic cell division. And then division of our sex cells, which is um, called meiosis. Cell division occurs um, when we increase the number of cells that we have in the body. Um, we all started out as a single-celled organism called a zygote. This is produced when um, the male and female sex cells, so sperm and egg, come together and form that initial single-celled organism, which is what we all were initially before we multiplied in cell numbers. Um, and we are composed of trillions of cells and we're actually composed of um, even more bacterial cells than we are human cells which is kind of a fun fact the term apoptosis means programmed cell death and this is how we decrease the number of cells um, when we are removing certain tissues from the body or if a cell is damaged it may uh, be stimulated to kill itself this is actually how we got rid of the webbing between our feet and our fingers between our toes and fingers during development and so if you've ever met someone who had webbed toes or webbed fingers what happened was during development those tissues didn't get destroyed and a lot of times these individuals can have that tissue removed very easily through just outpatient procedures if you look at on page 80 at the cell cycle um, we're going to go through the different phases of the cell cycle now, okay? So the cell cycle is a set of stages or a set of activities that occur that produce new cells. So we start with one cell, that cell divides, and we produce two cells. Those cells then will start their own cell cycle. So the initial parent cell... Um, divides producing daughter cells and so if we're talking about somatic cell division then we're talking about a process called mitosis so um, in the cell cycle for somatic cells we go through um, interphase and then mitosis um, interphase is the longest portion of the cell cycle. You can see that in figure 5.1. It shows um, the interphase and then the mitotic phase. And interphase takes up about three-fourths of the cell cycle. Interphase is broken down into three different phases. We have gap 1 and then um, synthesis and then gap 2. Gap 1 phase is a phase of the cell cycle where the cell starts to grow in size. Um, organelles will start to get ready to replicate. We're going to be producing proteins for DNA replication to occur. And during gap 1, we have a checkpoint. A checkpoint is a period in the cell cycle that allows us to make sure that the cell is growing properly and that the cell isn't doesn't have any damaged material so we want to check to make sure the size is, is acceptable that we can um, move on to the next stage 
if anything is damaged, then we're going to um, have to either fix the damage or undergo apoptosis programmed cell death. There are two molecules, two proteins that work together um, to protect us in the cell cycle. These are called the cyclin and CDK. And so they check the cell and then they allow the cell to move into the next phase, which is called synthesis. So during synthesis, DNA replication occurs. In the human cell, we have a total of 46 chromosomes. 23 of those chromosomes came from mom, 23 of those chromosomes came from dad. And so we have um, 23 pairs of chromosomes, is what we'd say. Um, each of those chromosomes, each of the 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs of chromosomes, has to replicate, which means we're going to have 92 chromosomes inside of that cell at the end of the synthesis phase. And then we move into the GAP2 phase. The GAP2 phase, we're going to be growing our cell again. We're also going to be replicating our organelles and producing proteins for the mitotic stage. So in GAP2, we have our second checkpoint. This checkpoint um, checks the DNA to make sure that the DNA is, um, has been replicated properly and we have no mutations within the DNA. We also are going to check to make sure that the cell size is acceptable and um, make sure there's no damage to the cell itself. If there's damage to the DNA or damage to the cell, then we're going to have to repair it. Otherwise, the cell will undergo apoptosis. We finally move into the third stage, or the, the I'm sorry, not the third stage, the next phase of the cell cycle, which is called the mitotic phase. Mitotic, or mitosis, is division of the nucleus. And in this phase, we're going to divide the DNA equally, and then the nucleus itself is going to, uh, and the nucleus itself is going to um, disintegrate, basically um, break down, and then we're going to produce two nuclei, one with half the DNA that we had, you know, 46 chromosomes, the other with the other half of the DNA, the other 46 chromosomes. And then this process called cytokinesis occurs, which divides the cytoplasm. And in the end of the mitotic stage, we have two identical daughter cells to the original parent cell. In the mitotic stage, though, we have another checkpoint, our third checkpoint. So in this checkpoint, we're making sure that the spindle fibers, which were um, produced by the centrioles, are attached at the proper region on each of the uh, chromosomes so that we can make sure that we separate the chromosomes properly. And there's just a bigger picture of the same um, diagram, which is in your textbook on page 80. I've already talked about um, the three checkpoints. Um, we're using cyclins and CDK. They work together. They check um, the three checkpoints occur um, in G G1 in G2, and then in metaphase of mitosis. If there's any damage to any of these areas, then you're going to have um, potential degradation of the cell or apoptosis occurring so that the cell doesn't grow out of control. And this figure just tells you um, on page 80, it talks about what happened, or on page 80, it shows the three, the three checkpoints. Um, and here it's just talking about what will happen if you don't have um, 
the proteins produced if DNA didn't get replicated properly, if the cell didn't grow properly. Same with over here and same with here, okay? So checkpoints are super important because um, what they do is they eliminate the production of cells that are not properly produced, so cancer cells, um, and they keep our cells intact. So we have healthy cells that are growing properly um, without cyclin and CDK, this wouldn't happen. If you go to page 81, we're going to talk about um, what chromatin is because the chromatin is what our DNA is when it is unbound, unwound, and just sitting loosely in our cell. We call it chromatin. When it condenses, it's called a chromosome. And then when we have chromosomes replicate, then we have what we call two sister chromatids that make up a chromosome. And that's at the top of page 81, if you're looking for the information in the book. We're going to skip over the um, information about cancer cells. And we're going to go right to um, 5.3, looking at um, what, so section 5.3, which is on page 84. And we're going to be looking at um, what mitosis is and what, um, how chromosomes work, okay? So we talked about what a, what a chromosome is when our DNA is all relaxed. It's called chromatin. And when it condenses, it's called a chromosome. We have 23 pairs of chromosomes in our body, in, our, in each of our cells. Um, 23 of these chromosomes came from mom, 23 came from dad. This is called a diploid number. So we have one chromosome from each parent, which is two chromosomes for each characteristic. So we have two, two um, traits for each characteristic. Hair color, we have one from mom, one from dad. Skin color, one from mom, one from dad. Um, finger length, one from mom, one from dad. Um, hair on our knuckles, one from mom, one from dad. Every single characteristic we have, we got one from mom, one from dad, and that's what makes us up. If we only have half the amount of DNA, that's known as haploid. So um, when we are producing our sex cells, sperm and egg, we actually are producing haploid cells. They have one half the amount of DNA, one of each type of chromosome. So DNA replication produces new chromosomes. And um, when the sister chromatids are replicated, or I shouldn't say it that way, I should say when the DNA is replicated and um, winds up into its chromosomal form, it consists of two sister chromatids. So um, in or on, I should say, page 84, underneath where it says the overview of mitosis, we're talking about sister chromatids. And you can actually see a figure where you have a single chromosome and then you have two sister chromatids connected at a region of the DNA called the centromere, or the region of the chromosome called the centromere. So a sister chromatid is genetically identical to the other sister chromatids. What happened was one chromosome replicated, so we produced two identical copies of each other. And then they just are, are connected to each other so that when cell division occurs, these two 
sister chromatids can come apart and we can have one chromosome of each type in each cell. Here's the figure I was talking about. Um, here's the centromere. This is one chromosome. So this could be like mom or dad's chromosome. When it replicates, it attaches to its sister chromatid at the centromere position. They're identical to each other. These two have the exact same information. So that when we split these up, one cell will get this one, one cell will get this one, and each cell will have the same information. And so DNA replication occurs during interphase. It occurs at the um, S phase or the synthesis phase. And so now here we have the parent cell. And as the parent cell goes through interphase during the S phase, each of those chromosomes replicates. So now you have up here we had four four chromosomes total or a two and two um, or two pairs of chromosomes. Here's dads and moms. Here's dads and moms. So you got one big blue, one little blue, one big red, one little red. Each of those chromosomes replicated. So now we have four chromosomes consisting of two sister chromatids each. And then we go through prophase or mitosis. Mitosis differs slightly in animals and plants. So in animals, mitosis, um, we go through the same phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, but the activity in um, cytokinesis and in um, that mainly cytokinesis differs. So in prophase, the nuclear membrane dissolves. And you can read about this on page 85 of your textbook. So the nuclear envelope dissolves. Centrioles move to the opposite sides of the nucleus um, as it dissolves. And then from the centrioles, spindle fibers come out and start moving towards the um, centromeres of the chromosomes. So the spindle fibers will attach to the centri centromeres. And here we have early prophase, nuclear envelopes starting to divide, centrioles are moving to the opposite poles, spindle fibers start moving out, and they start attaching to each of the chromosomes. So it goes through all of prophase, and so we can do early and late prophase. Um, I typically just talk about prophase in a nutshell, okay? Then we move to metaphase. Metaphase is the phase where all the chromosomes line up at this imaginary plate called the metaphysial plate. And then in anaphase, sister chromatids start pulling, or I shouldn't say that, I'll say the spindle fibers start ripping the sister chromatids apart to the opposite poles. And so the centromeres actually break apart. And so you can see this. Hold on. I'm going to move to this one so you can see these two. Here's metaphase. This figure is actually on page, what is that, 86 in your textbook, okay? Or 86 and 87, I should say. Um, here we have metaphase. All the chromosomes are lined up along this imaginary plate called the metaphysial plate. And then anaphase occurs and the sister chromatids are pulled apart. And so we have one of each of the chromosomes moving to the, each of the opposite ends of the, of the cell. So then we hit telophase. In telophase, the nuclear membrane reforms around each of the chromosomes or all of the chromosomes. Spindle fibers disappear and the chromosomes relax into their um, chromatin form. And then during anaphase and telophase, cytokinesis occurs. So you can start seeing cytokinesis here, where it starts the invagination of the cell occurs. So here we have the new nuclear envelope 
starting to form around each of the cells. Um, you see that there's a cleavage furrow because of the um, cytokinesis that's occurring. And each of these cells now has a nucleus that has the same four chromosomes as the original parent cell had. So in plant cells, there's still the four phases, but not all cells in plants undergo mitosis. Very specific regions of the plants um, undergo mitosis. And plants don't have centrioles, though they still have spindle fibers that help control the movement. They do have microtubules. And so here we have in plant cells, in prophase, the nuclear envelope is still going to dissolve and spindle fibers still form and attach to the chromosomes. They allow the chromosomes to line up at the metaphyseal plate and then anaphase occurs. But instead of the cell um, undergoing invagination, producing a new cell, um, in telophase, we produce a cell plate. And this separates the cells, producing new cells with a cell wall. In animal cells, we um, split the cells apart using protein called uh, actin. Actin acts like a rubber band, and it just keeps um, moving or making the cells get smaller and smaller between the two, the, the, the cytoplasm smaller between each of the cells, until we split the cells completely apart. And so here's that actin ring. And here we have the actin ring almost completely gone. And eventually, um, we're going to have two identical cells. So I told you in plant cells, we build a cell wall. Um, this is still on page 85 if you're reading it. And it goes to page 88. Yes, it's page 88, okay? Um, in plant cells, we build a new cell wall between the daughter cells. So instead of the, the contractile ring just splitting the cells, we produce um, vesicles, bring proteins, and produce a new um, wall, and then a plasma membrane forms between the walls, or so that we have two daughter cells that are attached to each other. Okay. And so here's the example. <clears throat> This is a cell game that I think you might enjoy. Um, you can just click on this. It'll bring you right to the cell game. I'm not going to bring you there and show it to you, but it basically goes through the steps of mitosis. And uh, um, it specifically looks at the importance of checkpoints. It's just a fun game if you want to play it. All right, the next part is on page 89. We're going into meiosis. Meiosis, which covers the remainder of this chapter, so it really goes through page 96, um, is division of our sex cells. And so its job is to produce um, cells that have half the number of chromosomes so that we can go through sexual reproduction and each each haploid cell can come together producing a diploid organism that can then undergo undergo multiple mitotic division producing the um, organism like the human and they also go through specializations of course So with meiosis, we start with a diploid cell. This diploid cell, depending on if we're going through male meiosis or, or female meiosis, is you know diff is going to be different. 
If it's female meiosis, it's an oogonia. If it's male meiosis, it's a spermatogonia. But in general, we're taking a single diploid cell, and then we go through th two cell divisions. We end up with four haploid daughter cells that are not identical. And so this is, I just want to quickly say, because I have it written here, pairs of chromosomes equal homologs. So I'm going to go back to this picture back here where we were looking at chromosomes. So remember, this is one chromosome, and this is one chromosome, this chromosome, and this chromosome. Um, one came from mom, one came from dad, but they are the same chromosome, right, with the same information. These chromosomes would be called homologs. They have the same information, just one came from one person, one came from another, okay? So in meiosis, we go through and one interphase, just like my to just like in um, the normal cell cycle. We go through interphase. We double the number of chromosomes, so we had a single diploid cell. We double the number of chromosomes, so in a human, that would be from 23 pairs. Um, well, from 46 chromosomes to 90 90 two chromosomes. And then we go through the first meiotic division, starting with prophase one. Um, in prophase one, the nuclear membrane will break down, but in prophase one, homolog homologous chromosomes line up together. So homologs get together. And um, they go through this process called crossing over, which I'll talk about um, in a few minutes, because it's one way that we increase genetic diversity. Then, then they go through prof or metaphase one, where homologs line up together at the metaphyseal plate. So instead of having all the chromosomes line up one on top of another, in mitosis and meiosis, metaphase one, homologs line up next to each other. And so here is prophase one. I told you that the homologs get together and they connect. So you can see that connection here. And what they do is they have a process called crossing over occurs where some genetic information is shared. So here we have a little bit of the red chromosomes, genetic information shared on this blue one and the blue over here shared on this red one. Same with down here. So this might happen, it might not. At the metaphyseal plate, chromosomes line up, but the homologs stay together. So here we have the small chromosomes, and here we have the big chromosomes. They can line up any way they want. This is known as independent assortment. Just because we have a small blue here doesn't mean the big blue has to be over here. It can go wherever it wants, okay? But they line up together. Then we go through anaphase one, in anaphase one, the homologs are pulled apart, so they still have, the sister chromatids are still together, um, just the homologs are pulled apart. So in the end, we're going to have haploid cells that have duplicated information. And then in telophase, nuclear envelope can reform, cytokinesis can happen, and then we have two daughter cells. The daughter cells are going to be um, genetically different from the um, from each other, whereas the daughter cells in mitosis, you have genetically identical information. So in this case, we have a big red and a little blue. Over here, we have a big blue and a little red, and each of the chromosomes has a little bit of a different um, information. So mom, mom's sister chromatids are not identical anymore. Um, and neither are dads. Then we go through a rest period. A rest period, uh, basically, there's no replication of DNA. Cells might get checked, so we might go through a check, but we're not going to replicate any more DNA or anything. So this is known as interkinesis. 
And at this point, we have haploid cells that contain duplicated information. Meiosis follows interphase after the chromosomes are different than the chromosomes. DNA replicates the same thing as space. After the three successive cell divisions of meiosis, a single cell will Meiosis follows interphase after the chromosomes of a diploid cell have replicated. DNA replication occurs during S phase. After the two successive cell divisions of meiosis, a single cell will produce four cells, each having the haploid number of chromosomes. Prophase 1 of meiosis 1 begins with the condensation of chromosomes and the vesiculation of the nuclear membrane. Centrosomes, which duplicate at the beginning of meiosis, begin moving apart, and the spindle fibers begin forming. Early in prophase, synaptonemal complexes form, and the homologous chromosomes are seen to align next to each other to form a structure called a bivalent. A bivalent is composed of four sister chromatids. Crossing will occasionally occur between homologous chromatids within a bivalent. During prometaphase 1, the spindle apparatus continues to form and bivalents become attached to kinetochore microtubules. One pair of sister chromatids is connected via kinetochore microtubules to one pole, while the homologous pair of sister chromatids is connected to the opposite pole. The complete assembly of the spindle apparatus occurs during prometaphase 1. The chromosomes align at the metaphase plate during metaphase 1. It is important to notice that bivalents are aligned along the metaphase plate rather than individual pairs of sister chromatids, as in mitosis. Anaphase 1 involves the separation or disjunction of homologous chromosomes with each pair of sister chromatids moving to the opposite pole of the cell as the kinetochore microtubules shorten. When the conjoined sister chromatids reach the poles of the cell, they detach from the spindle apparatus, and the nuclear membrane begins to reform. A cleavage furrow forms, and cytokinesis ultimately results in two cells, each having the haploid chromosome number, with each chromosome consisting right. of a pair of sister chromatids. Hopefully, at this, this point, you have a really good understanding one, of And what after a period of is. interkinesis, the two daughter cells start course, the second cell division cycle called well. meiosis 2. So then we go through meiosis 2. Meiosis 2 is very similar to mitosis. So we still have, um, we're still going to have the chromosomes or new spindle fibers forming um, to attach to the chromosomes. Um, we're going to have the nuclear envelope is going to dissolve again, and then it's going to go um, chromosomes to the um, metaphysial plate, that imaginary plate in the middle of the cell. But this time they line up just like in mitosis. So um, chromosomes line up one on top of another. And then in anaphase 2, the sister chromatids split apart. So centromeres divide just like in meiosis or mitosis again. In telophase 2, cytokinesis occurs and we end up having four non-identical haploid sex cells. And so this is showing just one of those cells. This happens with both cells. Okay, this happens with both of our cells. So we ended up at the end of meiosis one with two daughter cells that were haploid with duplicated information. Each of these cells will go through this. So we go through prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two.
At prophase two, the chromosomes condense again, and the nuclear membrane vesiculates. During prometaphase two, the spindle apparatus forms, and the sister chromatids become attached to kinetochore microtubules. In this case, a pair of sister chromatids is attached to both poles, not just one pole, as in prometaphase one. At metaphase two, the sister chromatids are aligned along the metaphase plate, with each chromatid being attached to one pole. The sister chromatids separate or disjoin and begin moving to the poles of the cells during anaphase two. During telophase two, the nuclear membrane reforms and chromosomes decondense. In animal cells, a cleavage furrow is formed that causes cytokinesis or cellular division. As cytokinesis is completed, meiosis II results in the formation of four haploid Alrighty. cells. Thus, meiosis begins with a diploid mother cell that has replicated its chromosomes and ends with four haploid cells so containing here is one a set of chromosomes figure each. Figure from your textbook that just goes through this meiosis. Okay, we start out with a diploid cell right here which if you look on page, it starts on, I'm sorry, it starts on page um, 90. You see that diploid cell goes through meiosis 1. So it's kind of showing the end of meiosis 1 or part of meiosis 1 to the end of meiosis 1 here. And then it goes through meiosis 2. What we didn't see is crossing over. We didn't show that, okay? So at the end of meiosis, we have these haploid sex cells, and fertilization occurs when the haploid sex cells come together, and they form the diploid organism again. There are two processes that make meiosis so important in increasing genetic diversity. Well, actually three if you think of fertilization because um, fertilization is also a random process to some extent. It's not super random. I mean, we choose our mates, but um, still, depending on the mate choice that we do, it will, it will increase genetic variability or genetic um, differences within the organism. So one of those processes is called crossing over. The other is called independent assortment. Crossing over occurs in prophase one, and this is when your homologs come together and they share genetic information. So you can see here, we just have one pair of chromosomes and we're sharing information on um, from the mom and dad chromosomes so that when the cells actually split and we produce four haploid sex cells, each of those chromosomes is genetically different from the other ones. Independent assortment then is also um, a mechanism that increases genetic diversity. So with independent assortment, you can have um, chromosomes line up at the metaphysial plate in mitosis or in meiosis one um, randomly. So just because this chromosome is on this side does not mean that this chromosome has to be on this side. This chromosome can be on this side. Since we have 23 chromosome, 23 pairs of chromosomes, that means we can have um, a lot of variability within each sex cell. Meiosis is the process that results in the formation of sperm cells and egg cells. The cells that will undergo meiosis are typically found in the testes and ovaries of males and females, respectively. These germline cells are diploid, having two sets of chromosomes, 
but will undergo meiosis to produce haploid cells, having one set of chromosomes. During fertilization, these haploid cells fuse to form a diploid offspring. Like mitosis, meiosis is preceded by an interphase. During this time, DNA replicates and each chromosome becomes doubled, consisting of two identical strands of DNA. Meiosis involves two divisions. The first division, meiosis I, halves the number of chromosomes, and in the second division, meiosis II, the sister chromatids are split. The end result is four haploid cells. Now let's look at each of these divisions in more detail. Meiosis I begins with prophase I. Individual, replicated chromosomes become visible, and each chromosome consists of identical sister chromatids joined at their centromeres. The spindle fibers start to form, and the nuclear envelope disintegrates. In addition, homologous chromosomes line up next to each other, and an event unique to meiosis occurs. During this unique event, called crossing over, two homologous chromosomes, which are lined up next to each other, exchange DNA between adjacent homologous chromatids. After crossing over has occurred, the sister chromatids of one chromosome are no longer identical to one another. In metaphase one, homologous chromosomes line up along the equator of the cell. For each pair of homologs, the orientation on the equator is random. Currently, the large purple chromosome and the small green chromosome are on top. However, the small purple chromosome could just have easily have ended on top. Each different orientation results in gametes with different combinations of parental chromosomes. This process is called independent assortment. Once the chromosomes are lined up, the ends of the spindle fibers attach to each centromere. In anaphase one, the chromosomes move apart from one another along the spindle fiber to the opposite ends of the cell. At this point, each chromosome is still double-stranded and has two sister chromatids. However, we are separating homologous chromosomes into two different cells so that each new cell will have only one member of the homologous pair and will be haploid. In telophase one, the spindle fiber disintegrates and cytokinesis, cell division, begins. Thus, in meiosis one, which progresses from prophase one to telophase one, two cells are created and each cell has half the number of chromosomes compared to the original cell. After cytokinesis is complete, a second division, or meiosis II, starts. This division is identical to mitosis, and the resulting cells have the exact same number of chromosomes as the original cell at the end of meiosis I. In prophase II, we now have two cells, each with two chromosomes. In this stage, the spindle fibers again start to form at the poles of the cell. In metaphase two, the chromosomes line up along the equator. This is different from metaphase one, where the homologous chromosomes were lined up. In metaphase two, each cell has only one of each homologous chromosome. In anaphase two, the sister chromatids move away from each other along so, the spindle fiber. And, mitosis, and in telophase two, um, along with cytokinesis, we DNA see the formation of four genetically different haploid but, cells the result differs. In meiosis, we have two divisions and it, we result in four daughter cells that are genetically unique. In mitosis, there's one division. We end up with two daughter cells that are genetically identical. In meiosis, we end up with haploid cells. In mitosis, we have the diploid number of chromosomes. Um, I already said this, but genetically unique in meiosis, genetically identical daughter cells in mitosis. Meiosis occurs at certain times in the life cycle. So in males, it starts at puberty and it doesn't end until the male dies. Whereas in females, um, we start going through meiosis prior to birth. We produce all of the eggs we will ever have before we're even born, and all of those eggs get arrested in meiosis one. 
and then at puberty, a few dozen, uh, a few dozen, a couple dozen, I should say, of the eggs get activated each month, and only typically only one egg is going to be nourished and undergo the rest of meiosis um, one. And depending on if um, fertilization occurs, that egg may not finish meiosis. But if it does occur, then it will finish meiosis. So it's very different in males and females. Oops, I went the wrong way, sorry. Um, hold on. Yeah, I'll just quickly go through this. Um, um, females, meiosis is oogenesis. Male meiosis is spermatogenesis. Um, we produce the oocytes or the egg cells and the spermatocytes or the sperm cells um, that then can come together through fertilization and produce the new diploid zygote that can go through multiple mitotic divisions and specializations to produce the new organism. And so I'm gonna let you watch this. Prior to meiosis or mitosis, DNA replication occurs. In both meiosis and mitosis, the nuclear membrane breaks down as the DNA organizes into chromosomes. In meiosis, chromosome pairs come together, or synapse, and crossing over occurs, resulting in mixing of the genetic information between the chromosome pairs. The paired chromosomes then align along the central plate of the cell and subsequently separate, one traveling to each end of the cell. In meiosis, a second division sequence occurs, resulting in four so cells a, with half the number of chromosomes. And meiosis are important to, mitosis um, involves life a single Earth. division sequence, resulting in two cells with no net change in the number of chromosomes. We can't produce new offspring that will take over and carry on our genetic information um, from generation to generation. So I'm going to end here because this is the last slide. This is a complicated chapter for some, so please come with questions. And have a good night.